After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who is born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the peoples, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them exactly the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for this child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go too and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Matthew 12, 1 through 12. One, Matthew 2, 1 through 12. Good evening, one and all, to this year's holiday chapel. This is a time of year of celebration and light. Now, not all of you may celebrate Christmas, and I think those of you who do may celebrate it in your own ways, just like those who celebrate Hanukkah. Yet like last week's chapel, I hope that you can hear the lessons, regardless of your faith, and be inspired by the light that these times, especially tonight, gives us. Tonight isn't about who you pray to, what you practice, where you're from, where you're going. Tonight is about being here, being together as a community on this dark, although slightly warm, December evening. Tonight is about transcending ourselves, life, love, and light. I expect some of you may be giddy with excitement over the upcoming break, or perhaps possibly nervous or even stressed. I ask that we all come together to help one another, appreciate this time, and enjoy it. Tonight, I hope that you feel like this place is your home, that you're welcome here. And with any home, we need to bring it to life. We need to give it a little bit of light, pushing the darkness and cold that's outside away. But spreading light comes with a sacrifice, one which I hope you are all willing to fulfill when we have each other. It's our community that gives us strength to spread the light to every corner of the earth. As you travel, you will carry cardigan this family with you. I now ask that you sit back, take a deep breath, enjoy, and help bring a little light to tonight. According to the Bible, the Magi were three men who traveled a great distance to give gifts to the baby Jesus. They are often called wise men. But today, let us tell you a tale about some other gift givers. Della and Jim are a young married couple living in New York City. What a splendid that was. Indeed it was, Della. The central part of Christmas time is always so delightful. What shall we do now? Why, let's take a walk down Broadway and go shop. But we haven't any money. It costs nothing to look. Besides, we can dream anyway, can't we? Why, look here. Look at these scarves. Oh, wouldn't I be lovely wearing one of those? Don't be silly. You're lovely just as you are. And look at those poems. I admire them forever. 
pure Felicia, and imagine how they look in my hair. Della, your hair is already so long and beautiful. Look, it's almost to your knees. Do you think so, too? Do you really think it's beautiful? I may be poor, Della, but I'm the luckiest man in all of New York. Jim and Della are in a shabby little one-room apartment. But Jim does have one possession he is proud of. His pocket watch. Oh, what? With the time? You must be off to work. Don't be on later. I'll put in my time and nothing more. You look so sophisticated when you back to your watch. Do I? Even with this old leather strap, I use it in place of a chain. Oh, who's to notice the strap and such a handsome man is holding a watch? Jim leaves for his office. On the way out, he waves to the janitor Sydney. Good morning, Mr. Young. Off of work already, all right? I must be late for work, Sydney. No, sir. That's my watch. No. It was my grandfather. He's perfect time. Quite remarkable. Sydney, about my balance. It says on it, Mr. James Dillingham Young, just like you asked. That's just it. Perhaps it would be best if it just said Mr. James D. Young. Oh, no, sir. Dillingham sounds so distinguished. Distinguished for a man who makes thirty dollars a week, not for a man who makes more a mere twenty. Another key cut? Time is hard. Oh, yes, they are, Sydney, but $20 or $30 a week, I must be on my way. Like Jim, Della has only one treasure her long, beautiful hair. Della and her neighbors sit together at the kitchen table. $5.86, $1.87. No matter how often I count it, Miss Porter, the amount never changes. Of course not. And how I've earned those <coughs> I've learned to drive a hard bargain. The grocer, the butcher, the milkman, I think they cringe when they see me coming. I'll take the worst cuts of meat to save a penny, a bruised fruit to save a two. Don't worry, things will turn around for you. I just know it. But it's Christmas Eve, $1.87. What can I buy my wonderful gym with $1.87? Don't buy it, just then, Della has, happens to glance in the mirror. She catches sight of her long, beautiful hair, rippling and shining like a cascade of brown water. She stands for a moment. A final tear splashes <coughs> on the warm carpet. I have it, Miss Porter. Oh, Della, you <coughs> mustn't. I must, for Jim, for Christmas. On goes Della's old brown coat and old brown hat. And with a girl of skirts and a brilliant sparkle still in her eye. She flutters out the door and down the stairs into the street. To be continued a little bit later on. I now like to welcome Mr. Scheiber and the Cardigan Glee Club as they perform Personnel Codier.
I'd sacrifice anything to find him. How much is it worth? Your hair? Twenty dollars. I'll take it. Her hair gone, and twenty dollars crumpled in her fist. Della rushes out onto the street. Now for the next president. In two hours, Della ransacks the stores, searching for that special something. He needs an overlook, and every day he goes off to work without gloves and warm his hands. He knows this must be something precious, something worthy of me, and the honor of my life gift. He says, two spots, just a thing. May I help you? My name is Ted Watchchain. Why, certainly, miss. It's platinum, a fine chain, but very expensive. It's so perfect for my husband. With a chain like this one for his watch, he could check the time at anyone's company. How much is it? Twenty-one dollars. I'll take it. How bad is it, Miss Porter? A pretty clean like you. You're adorable with or without your hair. We're, we'll curl what's left of it. That's what we'll do. We'll curl it. We'll curl it. We'll curl it. Within 40 minutes, Della's head is covered with tiny pearls. That's not so bad, Al, is it? But when Della looks at her reflection in the mirror, she reveals one of these. It did give us a face before it takes a second look. We'll say a little bit of the truth, school boy. A boy? But what could I do with a dollar and 87 cents? I'll go now, before Jim gets home. Yes, you'd better. He's never late. Don't you worry, it's going to be all right. Oh, please let him hear so pretty. A moment after Mrs. Porter leaves, Jim steps in. Seeing Della, he freezes. He says nothing. He nearly just stands there with a peculiar expression on his face. Jim, darling, don't stare at me that way. I had to put my hair off and sold it because I couldn't have lived through Christmas without giving you a present. It'll grow back. But Jim continues to stare at Della. He seems to be in a trance. You don't mind, do you, Jim? My hair grows up with fast, Jim. Say something. You can't imagine what a wonderful gift I have for you. You, you cut off your hair. And sold it. Don't you like me just as well as you have? And still me without my hair. Jim looks around the room, curiously. <laughs> you see your hair is gone? Don't go to the floor. It's gone. I did it for you. Don't make that mistake, Della. I don't think there's anything in the way of your haircut that would make me love you any less. But you, if you unwrap this present, you'll see why it took me by surprise. Della unwraps the gift and screams for joy, then cries aloud. For there are the combs, the precious tortoise combs she'd so long desired with the hope of ever having. Della holds it out to him in her open palm. Is it a Jim? Let's put it on your watch. I want to see how it looks. Jim, Jim tumbles onto the sofa and begins to laugh. Della, I sold the watch to get the money for your coats. Now they laugh together. Let's put our presents away and keep them for a while. They're too nice to use just yet. And now, suppose we have some dinner. <coughs> You might think they were foolish. But in a word to the wise, let us be careful of this. Of all who give and receive gifts, these two were the wisest. They are the mad man. Thank you. In a moment, Glee Club and Ensemble will be leading us in Silent Night the piece that we practiced together as a community about two weeks ago. Glee Club will lead us together in English first. Then they will go through several verses in German, Spanish, French, and Mandarin. Finally ending with us all uniting in song in our own first language. So now, Richard Jackson, if you would do the honors. Mr. Scheiber, Cardigan Glee Club and Mrs. Paracone and the Cardigan Ensemble. Let us prepare for Silent Night.
Now please join me in prayer or silent reflection. <laughs> On this night, we gather here, together as one. May we be filled with wonder and light. Let us feel the inspiration to spread that light. Let us never forget that there was once darkness where now there is light. Let us remember that void, that darkness, has not gone, but must be fought every day with our own spirit. Let us remember that our light shines brightest together. When one of us falters, let us not let them fall, but help them. We ask for the strength to continue our work, to keep ourselves, our souls, bright, to listen and be mindful of others. We ask that we become worthy of the light given to us. Amen. <laughs>